Fellas, AC here. Welcome to another video. It's that time of the year and it's the end of a decade. So I wanted to do a fragrance video related to that subject. Which are the most important releases of the last decade? Now I saw a beautiful video by Mr. Smelly and I thought, okay, I need to do a, a video of my own as well in this context. So this is how I plan to do it. I'll do it in two parts. The first part are my views on five fragrances. The second part, I want to do a poll. So the first video, when I put this out in the comment section, you tell me which one is the most influential fragrance according to you or how many of them, however many you want of the last decade. <clears throat> and based on your responses, I'll collect and based on your responses, I'll compile a list of five, which I'll publish on the 31st of December, the end of this decade. All right, so let's start. So part one. Now, what I've done is I've looked at the entire uh, releases of the last decade and I've come up with five that I think have touched everybody. No matter if it's a niche or designer, it doesn't matter. It's a single list. And I've come up with five that have touched masses. It has either uh, impressed you or it has either, uh, it has either given, gotten you a lot of compliments or it has inspired you to take up this hobby. And I'm sure a lot of people will identify with the five I've picked today. So let's start. I'll start with the fragrance which was released in 2010. And this fragrance created a new genre, if you like. And it brought in synthetics into the mainstream in a big time. And like it or loathe it, synthetics are very much part of our lives now. Yeah, it is. Bleu de Chanel EDT. Now, if you dislike this fragrance like I do, you'll be surprised how many compliments you'll get. Yeah? And I, I can vouch for it. I don't like this fragrance. I bought this bottle in 2013. I haven't used much. And this fragrance, no matter how much I dislike it, I wear it, I get a compliment. Yeah? Bleu de Chanel created a stir. When it came, you know, into being, most of the sales reps used to push this like mad. And <clears throat> they used to say, you know, this is this is one of the highest um, compliment magnets you, you can find. And it's true. It, you'll get compliments from one and all, especially ladies. Ladies absolutely love the smell. So this created this um, metallic grapefruit combined with ginger, vetiver, masculine notes, no sweetness, and heavy dose of ambroxan. And this fragrance created a trend which has been followed subsequently by major houses. Yeah, Even Roja has followed this trend. So Bleu de Chanel is one of the most influential fragrances of the last decade. That's number one in the list. 2010, beautiful fragrance. Next on my list is Dior. And this again is a very important release. It was released in 2011 and it brought barbershop fragrances to the chic category. This fragrance is a barbershop fragrance which has been decorated and created in a way where one and all praise it because barbershop fragrances have uh, an image of being retro because most of the 70s fragrances were barbershop fragrances but this one is not. This is a very modern barbershop fragrance. It's Eau Sauvage Parfum. This original one came out in 2011, followed by 2012. Now there's a new version which came out in 2017. But whichever version you choose to get, it's a fabulous fragrance because take Barbershop signature, that sprightly bergamot lavender signature that is there, and oak moss, that is there in every fragrance from the 70s, and encase it with a fantastic orange and myrrh. And this is what a modern, successful man would want to wear. What a beautiful fragrance this is. I've done a full review of this, you can check it out. But this is a very important release in my mind of the last decade because one and all praise this fragrance. One of the finest modern, masculine barbershop fragrances you can buy. And this fits into any occasion you can throw at it. Office, you know, ceremonies, parties, clubbing, whatever you want. As long as you are dressed a little bit, this will not let you down. What a beautiful creation this is. 2011, Eau Sauvage Parfum. 2012, let's call it, because my bottle is 2012. 
Next on my list is another Chanel. And this fragrance took an abstract concept and bottled it and created a magical fragrance. It is a flanker, of course, Chanel Allure Homme Sport Eau Extreme. I've done a full review. This is a fragrance that fits one and all. Everybody knows this fragrance. And what a beautiful fragrance this is, guys. It takes the abstract concept of an aquatic note. This fragrance smells aquatic and then mixes it with an orange and tonka combination. What a, I mean, how bizarre does that combination sound? And mixes it with pepper. I've done a full review, you can check it out. But this fragrance is uber modern, uber masculine, and a fantastic compliment magnet. Those people who hunt compliments, who like to be complimented, would be completely surprised on how much attention this fragrance gets. And as, you know, Blue de Chanel, every time I wear it, I get a compliment. And that's why it's quite an important release. Not only does it smell beautiful, it's a very unusual concept. There are no clones of it. At least there's one half a clone by Amaf, which is not available. And it gets you compliments. It smells beautiful. It's made beautifully. Just needs a bit of heat, I think. It smells better in warm weather. So that's why I picked it, you know. And it was released in 2012. Next on my list is an absolute boss of a scent. You know, when you're dressed up and you want to give an image of you are an absolute alpha male, but you have tremendous classiness and style, this fragrance will never let you down. It was released in 2014, and this fragrance is one of my absolute favorites. Diorum Parfum. I've done a full review. This is uber masculine. Amazing, man. This fragrance smells absolutely amazing. It's got notes of iris, leather, oud, sandalwood. I mean, this fragrance is so beautifully made. It just takes the Diorum DNA, which is probably one of the most important releases of the noughties, and takes it to a next level, you know, combining it with notes like leather. Oh, that leather, that iris, you know, this is just a masterpiece. And if you have this in your collection, you will wholeheartedly agree with me. One of the finest and the most important releases of this decade. Diorum Parfum. What a fine fragrance this is. Absolutely fabulous. So that was four. And the fifth one and the last one in this list is a fragrance because of which many people have taken up fragrance collection as a hobby. It has turned many people who didn't care about fragrances into avid collectors and people who had never thought of fragrances seriously turned into collectors and you know, aficionados and whatever you want to call it is creed's aventus the aventus the king this fragrance like it or loathe it this fragrance has single-handedly contributed to many converts right when i first smelt it and i'm going to tell you the experience i had I, have, I haven't got a full bottle because the current formulations doesn't smell like the experience I got. But I've got two bottles, two decants. This is 17T01, which is a very nice batch. But I'll tell you the first impression. Back in 2011, my favorite joint still is, was London's Selfridges. I went there, I used to go there pretty frequently, and I went to the Creed Boutique, or Creed Kiosk, as they like to call it and the sales rep sprayed this new release by Creed. It was basically just after Christmas, I believe. So just the decade was just turning, 2011, January. And he sprayed it on my skin and I just smelt it. And I went, boom. There's only two or three times in my life that has happened. First, when I smelled Fahrenheit, I was bowled over. I've ne I had never experienced anything like Dior's Fahrenheit. And that was back in 1997. This time, I had not experienced anything like it. I knew I was smelling something fruity, but it was smoky. It was mysterious. It was mossy. It was woody. It was just mind-bogglingly beautiful. And I was just completely stunned. I, know that, I knew that creeds were amazing, but this was taking it to the next level. That was my first experience with Aventus. It was amazing. And the, the the versions that I have currently or I have smelled currently doesn't do that magic. Maybe my nose is so attuned to it, but it created a new 
category almost of using pineapple, blackcurrant, apple, you know, musk, moss, um, birch tar. What are you doing? You're completely redefining the rules of Shepra. And you know what? It's a Shepra. And they've created this, they've created this amazing fragrance called Aventus and it rules everybody's hearts. Ten years on, it's ruling still, still ruling. People love Aventus, people swear by Aventus. Sometimes people will only have one bottle and that is Aventus. It is a fabulous fragrance, no denying that. So I think it's one of the most important releases of the last decade, this decade. So now it's over to you folks. You watch this video and you vote which ones you think, apart from these five, should be in part two. And once I get enough results, well, I won't wait. I'll publish a list on the 31st of December, which will be the part two and the concluding part of the rest five. Thank you for watching. Take care. And if you can, please do press the like button. Don't forget. Take care. Bye-bye.